Hey everyone, welcome back to Pureology. It's no secret that Escape from Tarkov is a CPU intensive game. So what matters the most when selecting a CPU for a build if you're an EFT player? Today I'm going to be comparing the performance of nine different CPUs in EFT, ranging from entry level to extreme enthusiast level and everything in between. I've listed each CPU in the description below. If you want to see how each of these CPUs stack up against each other in EFT, go ahead and grab a seat and stick around. I'm going to roll some side-by-side -side footage of each of these CPUs, then compare statistics and do a little bit of analysis, and then I'll share my final thoughts. All right, so here's what I did to set up my tests. I used two maps, factory and streets, and I used 1080 and 4K resolutions. What I did was record each map in each resolution on minimum settings and maxed out settings. So it was 72 total runs, eight on each map minimum, and sometimes Killa or Tagilla would kill me so I'd have to restart. It wasn't just 72 actually. <laughs> I used offline mode here and cranked the AI amount up to high to put a heavy load on the CPUs and really test their performance here. Alright, so let's take a look at some of the stats here. 
At first it can seem hard to distinguish what the key statistics are, but laying it out like this lets us use our eyes to determine what they are instead of having to look at the specific values. So what's important is the relationship to each other. I can see that the chunk in the middle, the 5950, the 5800X3D, the 7700X, the 7950X, 13600K seem to be falling within the same range. 13900K and the new 7000X3D seem to be ranging at the top and then the 5600X is falling at the bottom. So it makes sense that the least powerful chip is producing the lowest numbers. I'm curious to see if that 51 is an outlier or if that number continues to be significantly lower than all the other chips. So looking at some CPU stats here, I'd like to note that the 7950X3D tests were run with the second CCD shut off. It does not affect the FPS performance, but it does lower the power draw by about 30 watts. So if the second CCD were on, it would probably be somewhere around 80 for the power draw. Instead, it's at 48, which is pretty amazing because it's the top performer. The other things that stick out to me are the high power usage on the 7950 and the 5950X. Other than that, temps are between 50s and 60s. Usage ranging from 20 to 30%. This was 1080 low. I can see that the chips that had the higher frame rate had higher GPU power, temp, and usage numbers because it was able to allow the GPU to work more.
another thing to keep in mind, guys, when looking at these stats, is that the numbers aren't really important here. They don't, they don't necessarily translate into online numbers. These runs are done under a standardized set of conditions so that the results can be used to compare performance against each other when all the conditions are equal. Okay, so what's more important here than the numbers is looking at the relationship of these distributions. And the trend I'm seeing is that the 7000 X3Ds and the 13900K are consistently leading the pack in FPS performance. While the vanilla 7000s, 5800 X3D and 13600K seem to be in the tier right below that. And then the vanilla 5000s coming in kind of in the bronze tier. Okay, let's look at some CPU numbers. The ones that matter to me on this page, the 7950X, 5950X, and 13900K are just eating up that power over 100 on each. It's really, really amazing to me that the 7950X3D has the best performance, but also the lowest power draw. That is why I've always been so intrigued with the X3D technology. It's ultra efficient and its output level is insane. It's just crazy. So technically that's a simulated 7800 X3D's numbers, but yeah, I, I mentioned this earlier. I ran that 7950X3D with the second CCD off for that run. Okay, so here are the GPU numbers. Nothing really stands out here. It kind of reflects the same pattern as the FPS performance chart. The 7900X3D power number looks a little low, but that could just be an aberration, I think.
Там, бля, вампир, шупырь! Пацаны! Okay, factory 4K low numbers, kind of following the same pattern here, 7950X3D, 7900X3D, 13900K with the highest numbers. And then in the second tier, we have the vanilla 7000s, the 5800X3D and the 13600K and then in, in a tier below that we'll have the 5000 series AMDs. Okay, as you can see the temps are between 50s and 60s, usage between 20s and 30s, this is all very normal and it's gonna fluctuate. The thing that interests me on this is the stock differences you can immediately see between the power usage levels. If you recall our FPS chart, they kind of go in descending order where the 7950X3D outputs the most FPS and goes down the list until we hit Intel and then the 13900K kind of matches the 7950X3D while the 13600K kind of matches the 5800X3D for output. Okay. In terms of power, this distribution is completely different. So this gives us an idea of which ones are more efficient. And I'm gonna lay these out in a way that makes it easier to see visually later. But for now, just keep that in mind that our distribution looks completely different on the power usage and it's not proportional to the FPS that we're getting. GPU stats for this one, I don't really see anything interesting. It looks pretty standard. Maybe the 13900K number looks a little high but it could just be an outlier.
Alright, so when I went to 4K Ultra, I saw something interesting happen. The playing field kind of leveled out, and it looks like we've become GPU bound. So performance is actually pretty even across the board, no matter what chip you're using in 4K Ultra, even on factory. So this shows you how much some of those settings really kick up the graphics. Because on 4K low, we still had our regular distribution, but now things have kind of evened out. So I think I'll need to start adding 1440 into here maybe, or different settings. But for now, at least it shows us that there's a line here. So we already knew that EFT was a CPU killer. I guess it can be a GPU killer too. So there are some constant things happening here on the CPU side. My biggest takeaway from this information is that the 5950X, 7950X, and 3900K are all running extra cores or CCDs that are not required for gaming but still drawing a lot of power. So while those extra cores are great for multi-threaded tasks, all they do for gamers is cost more on the front end, draw more power and generate more heat during gaming and eventually cost you more in power on the back end.
All right, guys, so streets 1080 low. Streets is the map that puts the most stress on the CPU in Escape from Tarkov. It has an insane concentration of loot, AI scavs, player scavs, bosses, PMCs, just a lot of content on the map. So Lighthouse was previously known as the CPU Thrasher and Streets has now taken that title. And as you can see here, the distribution follows the same trend as it did on Factory. So that's a good sign that the results are pretty consistent here on a CPU heavy map. This distribution stays pretty consistent throughout every single test. And I think the important conclusions are that the 5950X, the 7950X, and the 13900K are consistently using a lot more power than the other chips. These are the ones that have a lot of extra unused cores or extra CCDs that aren't used in gaming. And this leads to their inefficiency in these tests. Okay, looking at the GPU numbers, on the 5800X3D test, I forgot to turn up the fan. I was turning up the fan in each config, but I forgot to do it on this test. So that's why the temperature was a lot higher. But if you look at the other tests, this is just an outlier.
Okay, Streets 1080 Ultra, even with the settings turned up, this distribution is holding true. So it's further confirmation that this data is probably pretty accurate in terms of their relationship to each other. And I expect the GPU stat distribution to look similar to this, while the CPU power and efficiency distribution follows the trend we've been seeing. And I'll let these stats roll on the screen, but pretty much as I expected, similar distribution to the other tests. And again, as mentioned earlier, this distribution pretty much follows the FPS performance distribution, as we're still CPU bound here. And the GPU power and usage distributions should be parallel to the FPS chart, more or less.
Okay, here are the results for Streets 4K Low. And we've got more of the same distribution going on here. Nothing that really stood out to me here. CPU stats, most power hungry being the 7950X and 5950X, 13900K, 5950X having the worst efficiency because it's in the lowest tier for performance and also has some of the highest power draw numbers. Not a really compelling combo. Okay, GPU numbers, I'm gonna call them the gold tier chips. They are in the 200s for power usage. The silver tier chips are between 150 and 200. And then the bronze guys are between 100 and 150. And that's proportionate to the amount of frames they were putting out.
Okay, moving on to Streets 4K Ultra. The playing field evens out again, but the 5600X stops at its CPU bottleneck instead of reaching the same GPU bottleneck as the other chips. All the other ones seem to kind of hit the same plateau. And although the FPS average and max numbers are the same between the gold and silver tier chips, there are differences, there are pretty large differences between the 1% low numbers. So the Intels are coming in at lower 1% numbers in general in this test. On the CPU stats, nothing really unexpected here. I'll let it roll for a little bit, but nothing interesting I see here. Okay, for GPU stats, nothing really unexpected here either. I'll let it roll for a little bit and then I'm going to share my final thoughts. Alright, so I've given you a lot of raw data and information. I think at this point it's still a little difficult to distinguish kind of where they rank amongst each other. So what I've done is total the FPS average max and 1% for each CPU on each run, then I averaged that, and that gave me each CPU's performance score for this test. Then on each map and resolution, I totaled the power draw number, averaged it, and subtracted it from the performance score, and that gave me what I'm gonna call the efficiency score for each CPU, okay? So the higher the performance score, the better, the higher the efficiency score, the better, because that means it's using a smaller amount of power, and it also takes into account the actual performance value. So here's how I'm gonna break it down for you. I've created a visualization of the data here, and it's just like any other graph. You wanna be going up and to the right. Down and to the left is where you don't wanna be. On the y-axis is the performance score that I determined earlier, and then on the x-axis is the efficiency score. So when we're talking about value, obviously we need to know prices, right? So what I did was go to pcpartpicker.com and put together the CPU, motherboard, and memory combos that will be equivalent to performance to the configurations that I used in testing. So you can see the approximate prices here. One thing to note is that on the 13900K and the 7950X 3D builds, I did max those out instead of trying to go for affordable parts. I think if you're getting a 13900K or a 7950X 3D, you're most likely looking at a premium build. So that's how I spec'd out those two flagship chips here. Note that the price of the 7950X3D is inflated right now because it's out of stock and you can't get it for less than 1200 right now. So before I get into this, I just want to say that my gaming experience was great on every single one of these chips I tested. All of these are good gaming chips. Now what I'm going to show you is a combination of the performance and efficiency differences between all of them and then the prices you can get them at so that you can decide which one fits you. So you can see there's a large range of prices here from $376 to $2,000. So right off the bat, I can see one data point that sticks out right away in the upper right quadrant. But I'll get to that in a second. First, we'll look at which four chips fell in the lowest category of performance and efficiency. They were the 5950X, 5600X, 7950X, and 7700X. Kind of expected with the lineup here, but here's how they kind of stack up against each other. Next up, on the higher end for performance, but still what I'd consider to be not super efficient is the 13600K. All right, looking at the upper right quadrant, this is where I want my CPU to be. And comparing the prices of the four, there's one that sticks out. The 5800X3D remains a high performing, super efficient and affordable chip 
that is still in the same ballpark as the 13900K, as the 7900X3D. The 7950X3D is way out there because I disabled the second CCD and that's really representing a 7800X3D, which kind of makes sense because it's the successor to the 5800X3D. With the second CCD enabled, the efficiency would go down, the performance would remain on top. So here's how it breaks down. The 7950X3D is the new gaming king. The 5800X3D remains the best value for an elite gaming CPU. While still being in the ballpark for the best performance available today. Something that's not represented here is the difference in user types between Intel and AMD chips that I've observed over the years. I think that people who like to tinker and tune their systems a lot will have a lot more to do with an Intel, so that does provide value in a different way for someone who likes to spend their time doing that. The advantage of the AMDs and why I think they will ultimately be more successful is that they're more plug and play. There's less tuning involved, they just kind of work with whatever you throw on it. You don't really have to mess with the settings much to get the max performance and they take out a lot of the thinking. Some people don't like that, but the majority of people will. So I hope this information was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below or join my Discord. If you want to message me, my name is Pieri. If you have a video, technical support, or build help request, go ahead and visit my website and fill out a request form. As always, I want to thank you for stopping by and choosing to spend some time here with me. I hope you have a great rest of your day.